This university has removed gender prefixes on university communication to students. The institution says students can choose how to be addressed within the university community, even if it's not linked to a legal documentation. It's the first South African institution to have done this. Uh, spokesperson for uh, gender, for Commission for Gender Equality, Javu Baloi, joins us now uh, to discuss this uh, further. Javu, thank you so very much uh, for joining us in studio, sir, and you're very welcome to Afro Breakfast. Thanks for having the Commission for Gender Equality on board. Well, you know, as a start, what uh, does this uh, decision really seek to, to address and, and how does it uh, help in any way in terms of uh, gender issues? It, it helps a great deal and it affirms the rights of those who mo normally uh, get to be targeted or marginalized at institution of higher learning. We have also highlighted this in one of the engagement with Vice, uh, Vice, Vice Chancellor Professor Adam Abib and other Vice Chancellors that we call upon to do to upon ourselves at to our gathering on gender transformation hearing to ascertain certain gender imperative at the institution. You remember there was a rape culture at Vets, yes. there was a rape culture at Rhodes, University of Venda, Limpopo, and then we said, what is it that you are doing? And also, what are you doing to safeguard the rights of transgender people, LGBTI people, stuff like those? And one of the things that Vets did very well, and I do think other universities must do also, is that, you know, look, normally, and they say, issue of power relations mm. between student and staff and they came with a non-fraternization rule yes. that a staff member cannot get involved with a, a, a student unless otherwise that relationship will lead into something and they have to also go to the uh, gender office and register that and we believe that has done something significant that, along that road and we applaud the, also this milestone because most often times flow LGBTIs are targeted because of, you know, some of them, they don't want to be named by the, 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 the prefix Mr. or Mrs. We had a groundbreaking case in the in Limpopo where our legal officer, Mr. Dennis Matotoko, uh, won this case where uh, there's a person called Impella. Uh, whether it's a lady or a man, that person said, you know, I want to be called by Impella. I don't want to be called by another name. And uh, that person sued the Department of Education and we won the case. And, and that, that also, Go, it went directly to our thinking as a commission that, you know, why don't you afford people who don't want to be recognized as Muslim is a chance? And several people have, but have been having fights with Home Affairs. Our legal officer yes. in the Eastern Cape has also represented lots of, lots of them and assisted a lot of them to say, I have changed my... my my, my myself, I don't want to be called as Jabu now. I want to be called as Flo. So will you, as Home Affairs, call as, uh, change my ID also? And I don't want to be called Mr. or Mrs. So Home Affairs has been slow in reacting to this. And I should think they will wake up and catch and smell the coffee now to say, let's do something also and assist South Africans. Because, you know, people have got rights, Flo. Yeah. I've got the rights to be named by the name that I want to be named and called by the, the name that I want to be called for. Mm -hmm. So if we say we have got a very progressive constitution, why don't we implement that constitution and we hope as a commission for gender equality other institutions like and TVET colleges yeah. will follow suit if in case to protect the, the, the marginalized people at this institution uh, those that want to be called by Mr. Baloi myself I will go to VETS and VETS has got a platform nicely to say let me be called by Mr. I want that title Mr. Baloi but what's in the name after all so those are some of the things that you know we, 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 we applaud VETS and we believe VETS has done so well and then we hope there will be less targeting of transgender people. Was there a big call uh, for this? The reason I'm asking this is uh, VITS and, and I suppose government mm. uh, trying to really protect themselves in terms of uh, litigation against uh, possible litigation like the case uh, that you just spoke about now. Mm. No, 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 there was no big call for that. VITS was just proactive. They might have seen an instance like in Australia in their passports. Those that do not want to be called by any other sex, it, it, it is an A apparently in their passport, asexual, that, you know, they don't want any to be identified by any gender. What we, we see as VET has, has done might also have got impact on Home Affairs, like I've just earlier alluded on, that Home Affairs must also wake up and realize this might have a, a very serious, serious um, consequences for them, mm -hmm. uh, whereby they disregard people's um, as feelings, people's uh, changing their, 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 their genders, um, but there was no big call, but it's only 
vets wanting to be proactive and protect people who are being um, attacked and uh, marginalized, called names. You know, with us uh, human being, it's you not. Know, I won't say South Africans, but we're very um, we're, we're, we're less tolerant to something that you know it's not regarded as something that um, um, relates to me. If I'm a, I'm a I'm a male, I want someone to be heterosexual like me, and then I don't want them to be at because you know of my own um, shortcomings and stereotypes and lack of exposure. By so doing, vets has protected them, and we hope there will be less um, um, uh, targeting of the people of LGBTI and AQ community and transgender in that regard. So there was no bigger call, but we just see this as a, a milestone in, the, in, in, our, in our lifetime in endeavor to address the issue of gender equality. Mr. Boloy, and now I'm scared to call you that, but in any case, <laughs> Mr. Boloy, um, there is a possible uh, loophole uh, to this, and I wonder if you can help me mm. to uh, address it. Um, mm. There could be a situation where, and, and let me just go back, uh, you know, women have already and historically been mm. uh, on, on, on the back foot. Will this in any way address uh, the inroads uh, that, you know, government and universities have been trying to create for women? Let me give you an example. So say, for example, on your application form to be accepted into medicine, medicine school or, 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 or legal uh, or legal sc law school or whatever the situation maybe they would have weighed out, okay, how many uh, young girls are we receiving this year and how many young boys we're receiving this year. Now, if we do not have, uh, uh, if we have people who don't want to be identified by any gender, that sort of creates some kind of a problem in that, you know, you're accepting people and you might end up with an imbalance again where you've accepted a whole lot more young boys than you have young females. And so then you are creating another problem again gain for women who have already uh, struggled historically in terms of being on the back foot, which we've been trying to, to address and get in front of. So it seems as though, you know, a, a man can go, well, ah, there's that little loophole. I don't want to be addressed by Mr. And then it's easier to sort of uh, get into the university. That is a loophole, just an example that I'm giving you. And I wonder, how would that then be addressed by the universities if people are not going to be referred uh, by these prefixes of Mr., Mrs., Miss, and so forth? Thank you, Flo. I even phoned myself yesterday to find out from vets. Um, they have clearly explained it to nicely, and they have been going on a campaign to explain. The issue of mess and misses will be in correspondence. Uh -huh. When you fill the forms at vets, you'll be admitted at vets. Say you are 18, between 18 and 25. They will want to know the demographics, the racial uh, composition of vets. You still have to request it to feel whether you want to be identified as a female or male. But that on its own, the mess and misses, it goes to the correspondences that the university will have with you in, in, in retrospect. So that on its own, they have mitigated for that eventuality that, you know, it should be seen. Because vets also, look, there's an issue of imbalances uh, based on the demographics of the, the, the groupings that are there. So they still have to know whether how many females are there, how many males are there, how many black people are there, mm -hmm. how many colors, how many Indians how many Caucasian, how many other races, that is still going to happen. But it will be in something which is between the, the vets um, management and the person involved. It won't be on the board. You know, when we were going to school, some of us have gone to universities, you know, you'll see on, with your student card written on the board and your name there following Mr. Jabu Baloi and even issuing the, your marks there. So that might not, that won't happen anymore. They'll just write Jabu Baloi and it ends there if it's the, the, process, the system is still continuing. Yeah. So that's what they've said and they've mitigated for that and then students understand that, you know, somewhere, somehow, they will have to supply this information so that you know the imbalances that you know we expect mm. because you know remember you might find that you know there are a lot of males at vets and they need to get more females that's right they need to get more black people from certain rural areas mm. let's say from rural provinces to bring them on board they need to have that statistics on board and that they've mitigated for it by having that you know because you know the only thing the other thing that they needed to do was to win over <coughs> excuse me the people concerned Will you able to finish us with information? Should the need arise? Yes, we'll do so. So everybody who goes to vets will go there knowing very well that, you know, look, I don't want to be identified as Mr. and Mrs. But however, I am going to be forced or go call upon um, to be requested to supply this information for their own uh, demography, for their own statistical purposes, for their own analysis. And that is going to be happening. All right. So I'd, I'd like to go back to another issue that you raised, and I wanted to, uh, you know, speak more on it. Mm. You spoke about 
about the issue of, um, you know, uh, Vitz being sort of uh, being having to, to make this call that it just came out of nowhere and they just decided to be proactive. Mm. Um, it wasn't a big call from, from any group mm. in particular. Mm. And so I want to talk about the issues that have had, uh, mm. uh, uh, you know, big calls and asks from the different universities. Yes. You briefly touched on uh, the issue of gender violence, uh, the sexual assault of uh, students. It seems like this could be a sort of playing to the gallery type of easy decision to mm. make. And perhaps that's why it was quite easy, I suppose, for the university to go ahead with it. Um, the vast, varsities have historically been quite complacent mm. on the issues of sexual assault of uh, female uh, students. Uh, to me, it seems like this is putting lipstick on a pig when there are still bigger issues that are plaguing uh, universities. I mean, I don't necessarily care what you're calling me, but make sure that I am safe in my environment as a student. I do not want to be getting raped, for example. Mm. So why are they not dealing with the bigger issues that have, uh, and I'm not saying that this is a small issue, but the issue of rape, the mm. issue of racism, mm. these are just still going on. So I'm wondering why have they decided that there's a hierarchy in terms of what is important to address now, mm. in the now, instantly, um, when it comes to the bigger issues that are happening in universities currently? Mm. To be fair on VETS and to be fair on some universities like Nelson Mandela University and the University of Cape Town um, and um, uh, UKZN, we have called them not once, mm. not twice. And day in and day out, you know, they call even upon us to come and also to be capacitated on issues of rape or gender-based violence. How would we then go forward? VETS has got an office now, fully capacitated, fully resourced, that deals with this issue of gender-based violence. You remember that there was a disjuncta. We, what we have found that there was a disjuncta between police and implementation. Hence, there was no impact. Um, say it's me being a lecturer, professor at VETS. I am found to be harassing floor a student. And you'll find that, you know, normally it goes, it trade on the side of the professor. They protect the professor because they wanted to protect the image of the university. And the Gender Commission came on board and said, look, it can't be like that. This rape culture, it is because of some of the issues that are normalities that are happening at universities. Mm -mm. And other issues is because of this let's a lapse in security in structure. Take an example of uh, uh, Mangosuji University of Technology. The Gender Commission went there and even signed a memorandum of understanding. They said they'll jack up the system. They'll say the security will be sensitized. They will always call upon us. We even went there to help them form a, ma a man um, a sector that deals with gender-based violence. Because look, even the match that happened on the 10th of July, organized <coughs> excuse me, by GCIS and the Commission for Gender Equality, was to appeal to men to say, let's begin to do things differently. Let's talk about issues, it's us who are raping. And the same thing that is happening, there are men for, forums and formation in these universities. For to be fair on vets, we might have subpoenaed them to appear before us. But we even gave them nice recommendations that they are following up. And I just think this one of them to be proactive, to say to the Gender Commission, look, we are doing something beyond what you have called us to do. You wanted us to, we have never had an incident at Vets of late uh, since we met with Professor Adam Mabib last year and uh, 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 prayer years. So those are some of the things that you know they're trying to do to, because we highlight with red flag the issue of LGBTIs being um, harassed at universities. And I should think that's being pro Yes, you, you might think that, you know, it's putting a lipstick on a pig. But it, by and large, you know, it's, it's a baby step. There are two things issues because university by their own self, you know, previously they would just be um, rude unto you to say, look, we're here for teaching and learning. Uh, other things, you know, um, people must protect themselves. But are doing something, we must meet them halfway. And also strengthen the issue of implementing policies and get unbiased people in a certain position whereby it matters the most that, you know, we hit them very hard. And then what we have also appealed to them, they exist within a community. The community where these universities are located, like roads, they need to work with the police. They must also ensure that, you know, these perpetrators who are there, some of them are not student flow. That, like in Bramfont, in Vest and UJ, they are just victims of the surrounding areas. So those are some of the things that, you know, we also as a gender commission need to ask the Hillbrook police station, police station in, in Park Town and uh, Bramfont to say, what are you doing to assist vets in what they've started yeah. so that you know we have what the, the leverage the greater impact at times you know because you know you will say it, it happens to flow it's not my problem
problem. It needs to be a community problem to say, let's read the sketch and let's support vets from the, what they've started. It's a teething issue, and we'll, they will have to check, check the system. Hence, we have got a monitoring and evaluation component at the Commission for Gender Equality to say, what is it that you know we have asserted? We don't bring them to us and um, um, glorify the media and say, look, we've brought them here to come and talk to us. No, we follow the process. Our, our, our staff have gone to University of Venda several times. It was another university with a rape culture. Mm. We do do so even other universities, Rose University, our legal officers and commissioners based in Eastern Cape, they're constantly be engaging with that. What are the issues that you're, you're finding? Where are the gaps? Where can we close? Because, you know, everything has got the element of, you know, when it starts, you know, it can't be a bulletproof. But going forward, we believe these universities, all of them, like vets have done, will do something to protect the girl you child. You think that they will follow suit? I mean, I'm thinking yes. of universities uh, like UKZN or, you know, in Venda as yes. well, where patriarchal uh, sort of um, standards have ever always uh, sort of uh, remained. Hmm. Do you think that yes. they will step back? They will, step, well? in, they will step to the plate. We are dismantling patriarchy at these universities. We are hitting very hard as a Commission for Gender Equality. We don't dance to the gallery when we hold them accountable. Yeah. But what we have seen, that patriarchy at times is not being uh, enhanced by male, male themselves. It's you women <laughs> who, even if voting, you know, they said, Chao can he be vice chancellor of University of Venda. Mm. You know, women will know will be singing my tunes and voices, but they will be fellow women. Look at the story of uh, as, um, um, uh, UCT. Yes. There's a lady who was supposed to be given a higher position, but it's fellow ladies, you know, who stood on their way to say, no, she can't be. You're and right. somebody who has You're been right. advising Dr. Mike's price for years on transformation, but that person is put by the wayside and they prefer someone who's not even um, um, a South African. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that, you know, with being xenophobic, but why don't we empower our own women? Mm -hmm. So those are some of we uh, someone uh, out of our commission will say we dismantle patriarchy, we undress patriarchy to Lay, lay it bare for society to see. So it's time for us male to recognize women are better. Women are very, <laughs> are very highly capable to run this institution. Look at UCT. Look at the, there's a, two candidates vying for, for position of vice chancellor at VETS. And it's good that it's two women that are, are for the, after uh, um, Professor Adam Abib. And that on its own will make South Africans realize why are we we're not creating that environment for women for a long time to coexist and we'll be supportive to them, to their agenda? But hey, it's women again who, who do such things at times. I, 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 you know, mm. I'm going to keep that quote very mm. close to my heart for mm. the rest of the day and this week. Mm. And I hope that my colleague Richard and Ty heard you. Women are better. And mm. I'm really running with that one Thank today. You Thank much. you so much. Thank you. For you always engage mm. with us so fully. And we do appreciate it. Uh, Javu Baloy, spokesperson for the Commission for Gender Equality. We thank you very much, sir, for your time. And that's, of course, in relation uh, to VITS deciding uh, to take away those mis Mr. Mrs. Ms. prefixes and uh, would really certainly like to hear from you and you can get hold of us on uh, Twitter at uh, Afro Worldview is our handle there. You can uh, chat to us about what you think about that and do you think it's a great uh, step uh, moving forward.